In this video, I want to show you how to solve exponential equations, and then later on, how to evaluate logarithms that are not in base 10. So first to solve, we're going to use the following equality statements to solve an exponential equation, and then later on, logarithmic equations. So we're going to be given C, L, and R, which are greater than zero, and C does not equal to one. Now, if we start off with L equal to R, which are two different expressions, then I can log both sides and say that log L is equal to log R. Now this works with base 10, but it also works with any bases. So I'm going to put a little C here to say that C can be any base, greater than zero, but not equal to one. Next, if I have two log expressions that are equal, such as log L equal to log R, both with a basis C, then I can remove the logs and say that L is equal to r. Now we're not dividing by log, log is not a number, but we're stating that since both of the expressions are the same and that both of them have a base of c, then the expression that we're logging or should be the same as well. Now the general steps start off with logging both sides once you get one power on each side. Now it's not actually necessary that you get a power on each side, but you have an expression on each side of the equal sign. So I'm gonna put this in brackets. Next, we're gonna apply the power law so that you move the exponent to be the coefficient in front of the log. And then we're gonna expand by using the distributive property. If there are brackets, And you'll get brackets because the exponent, such as the second question you can see down here, had, was a binomial, and you'll see why. And then we're going to solve. You isolate x by moving all the terms with x to one side and factoring x out so that you get a single x. And then you can use your calculator to solve your expression. But only do this at the end so that we don't have any rounding errors in between. So let's take a look at these two examples here. So solve for x, so we're going to log both sides, that way we can bring the x eventually down to the bottom by using the power law. So by logging both sides, I can now take that x and move it to the front as a coefficient. And then we're going to divide both sides by log 3. Now you don't have to show this division step if you don't want to, but what you should show is that x is equal to log 17 divided by log 3. Now this is, there is no law to combine these together. Okay, what you're going to do is go to your calculator, type in log 17 divided by log 3, and that will give you 2.58. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the second one, which is a little bit more complicated. There are x's on both sides. So remember, we're, our goal is to try to find x. And if x is in the exponent, the only way to bring that to the front is to, or to bring it down, is to log both sides. Because when we log, we're able to move the exponent to be a coefficient in the front. All right, so we're gonna do that. But remember, when we move this to the front, don't just write this as x plus four log 17 because now it looks like it's just four times the log 17 but you actually have this entire exponent multiplying the log 17 and same with this on the other side so it should be 3x minus 2 in brackets and then times log 19. all right so our problem right now is that we have two x's so we need to eventually move all the x's to one side so we're going to distribute the log 17 into here so we get x log 17 plus four log 17 on the left. On the right, we get three x log 19 minus two log 19. Okay, we still have two x's. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move all the terms with an x to the left. And if it doesn't have an x, we're gonna move it to the right side. Okay, so we still have two x's on the left. However, what we can do is if I factor out the x, because there is the common factor of x, I now have the single x that I desire. 
So now I have log 17 minus 13 log 19 equals a negative 2 times log 19 minus 4 log 17. So my final step is divide both sides by this big expression here of log 17 minus 3 log 19. So I'm just going to write the final answer here as negative 2 log 19 minus 4 log 17 all divided by log 17 minus 3 log 19. So you're going to type this into your calculator. Now be very careful when you type it in. This whole thing is the numerator. You're going to divide by this whole thing, which is the denominator. So make sure that you put brackets around the whole numerator, divided by brackets again around the whole denominator. Otherwise, the calculator won't think that you're dividing the entire numerator by the entire denominator. I'll just think it's minus 4 log 17 divided by log 17 here. So you type all of this in, and you should get 2.87. All right, now let's take a look at how to evaluate logarithms in any base. So for example, let's say you were asked to evaluate log four with a base of seven. Now there is no seven to power of any exponent, at least not any nice whole number exponent that will give us four. So first, let's write the expression in exponential form with the answer being x. So to do this, let's say that log seven, sorry, not log seven, but log four with a base of seven is equal to x, then, we have 7 to the power of x is equal to 4. So I've just changed this into exponential form. So using what we just learned above, we're going to isolate x by logging both sides. So we have log 7 to the power of x equals log 4. And then we're going to bring the x to the front. So we have x times log 7 equals log 4. Divide both sides by log 7, x is equal to log 4 divided by log 7. Now hold on. If up at the top we said that x is equal to log 4 with a base of 7, but now down here we're saying that x is equal to log 4 divided by log 7. So that means that these two expressions must be the same, meaning that log 4 with a base of 7 must equal log 4 divided by log 7. So let's write that down over here. So that's log 4 divided by log 7. Now this property is really useful and we call it the change of base property. And generally what it says is that if we have log c, sorry, log a with a base c, then we can now say this is going to be log a divided by log c. And we can call it any base. So I'm going to put a little b here to indicate the base. And base can be, obviously, 10 is probably the most convenient one, but it can be any base that we like. And then a, b, and c have to be greater than 0 and b can't equal 1, and c can't equal 1. So let's evaluate this. We would type this in as log 12 divided by log 5. And then this would give me 1.54. And you would just type it into your calculator. I'm going to show you some other examples where this change of base property can be used. So let's say that we're here to solve for x. And we have log 2 with the base of x, log 5 with the base of 2 equal to 6. So using my change of base property, I can say this is log 2 over log x, but I'm going to leave this as base 10. I think it's easier. And then we'll have times log 5 over log 2 equal to 6. So these now cancel off. So I have log 5 divided by log x equal to 6, and then I'm going to actually rewrite this back into log 5 with the base of x equal to 6, which is just using the change of base property back again. Rewriting this expression in 
exponential form, I get x to the power of 6 equals 5. And then I can take the sixth root of both sides so that this is x is equal to the sixth root of 5. Or you can say 5 to the power of 1, 6. And if you type this in, this is approximately 1.31. All right, let's take a look at one more question. This is a kind of a nice one. I like these ones. Um, so we have log 5 with a base of 8 equal to x. We also have a log 3 with a base of 4 equal to y. But then the expression that I actually want you to find is log 15 with a base of 2. However, if you notice, the 8, the 4, and the 2 all have a common base of 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two expressions here with the x and y, I'm going to also change them to a base of 2 so that it matches my log 15 with the base of 2. So I'm going to rewrite this as 8 to the x is equal to 5. So 8 to the x is actually 2 to the power of 3x, which equals 5. And then rewriting this expression back into log form, I now have log, because now it does have a base of 2, so log base 2. 5 is equal to 3x. Let's do the same thing with the other expression. So we have 4 to the power of y equals to 3. So now this will be 2 squared, or 2 to the power of 2y equal to 3. Rewriting this back into log form, we get log base 2, 3 equals to 2y. All right, so the expression that we want to find is log 15 with a base of 2 and write it in terms of x and y. So log 15, we can rewrite this as 5 times 3, which is equal to log base 2, 5, using my multiplication rule, plus log base 2, 3. So remember when we multiply, we're going to add our exponents. So now I can see that log 5 with a base of 2 is equal to 3x, which is over there, plus, and then log 3 with a base of 2, which I can see over here, is equal to 2y. I'm going to substitute that in. So now log 15 with a base of 2 is equal to 3 times x plus 2 times y. And x and y are these expressions that we get from up here.